Okay, hello and welcome to the channel. I just wanted to make a really quick video. Um, it is quite late right now. Uh, basically just going over a technique that is new to Blender 2.8. Um, I think it's something that's been in other software, like I think Maya has had uh, multiple object editing for a while, but I've used Maya a lot recently and um, it doesn't quite hold up to the same standard as now this new version that Blender's coming out with. Um, because basically without going over anything that's too basic, so UV unwrapping, um, it's basically the same as it's always been, um, so there's other Blender tutorials out there for that. Uh, but going over the new stuff, um, basically you, when you pick, create a cube now you've got your UV map, okay? And in the previous Blenders, if you had multiple cubes, if you wanted to lay them out, to all fit within the same UV space. So currently they're, they're all going to be overlapping, but because they're all got the same UV space, you know. But if I wanted to texture all these differently, but I wanted them within the same 0 to 1 UV space, then I would have to do things like join them together and then separate them, which is like quite a task, especially when you've got a complex object like a character, where all these different components of the mesh are, are so close together that separating them isn't very easy. Um, so if you want to go bake an exploded mesh, you know, you want all the UV maps to be in a zero to one space, and then you want to export that as separate objects. Um, so now in Blender, you don't have to join them together. You can just select multiple objects by shift right clicking or left clicking if you put it on left click. And now I've selected all four of these cubes. Um, and if I wanted to arrange them all into one UV space, I would just then pack the islands and or go in there myself and change, you know, to whatever position that I might want to lay these out in, you know. Um, which means that I've used like a, all my UV space on multiple objects and it's very, very helpful. Um, so if I want to get one of these spheres down here, I select all the objects. Oh no, like I can't texture this all together because things are overlapping. So what I would do is just pack the islands or whatever, or move it by hand. And uh, that now makes things a lot, lot quicker, um, which is really useful. Um, but what got me making this tutorial um, is basically um, there was a GIF on Reddit, and I saw someone they'd done an old technique, um, and um, I never really thought of it until I saw it. But this multiple unwrapping objects um, comes in really handy, um, and it's not just unwrapping; it's uh, you know you can do your full 3D modeling across multiple objects, and then just tap out. Um, but the multiple objects thing comes in really handy when you've got simulations involved uh, for this technique where you want to get all these spheres and then you want to see where they land and then you want to unwrap them so that you can put an image onto them right um, so I've not really done simulations in a while um, and I've not really tested this one yet so this is what I've got and the idea is once they've landed in their final position you can grab them and then you can go in and edit them, right? And now we know where the UV spaces are. Um, so we could either pack them separately, which isn't very useful because then we don't know which one's which, or we could do a project from view. Like while we're in the top view, we can project from the view. On these, when they've settled into their final position, we can project downwards or from the side. Um, I'll do it downwards for now and then we can grab um, our material which I haven't created a material so um, that still needs to be doing, done separately so uh, that'll be on your active one but I'll make it red so we can see that what I'm doing put on materials see that one's red I've changed this one so they're all gonna have the same material and then I'm gonna feed into that material an image texture If I can see it, there it is. So I'm going to select this image, which is just 
one of my backgrounds. It was like the first image that came to me right now. And if I make these if I make these spheres larger, which I want to scale them from. So that they just kind of join together. That one's actually got the material on because it fell off earlier. So you have a, the idea being you've got a collection of random objects that once simulated, they're all going to fall into position. Which I'm going to have to pause it before this ends. And now that they're all in this position, you can then grab them all minus the uh, planes. You can bring them all minus the planes, hopefully. Oh yeah, that's because my active one. So you can grab them all and then you can go into the top view and you can unwrap from project from view. And I'm going to try and get Joel to a good position and then, you know, their faces across them. So then the idea would be that um, when I bring this out, when I bring this animation back to where it was, um, it's just a collection of random balls, and then when I press play, they magically fall into the position to create the photo. Um, so a bit of a crummy example, but I think it gets the message across. And again, it is very late, and I'm just uh, just making it real quick. So I hope that was useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.